What's up, everybody? I just finished book two in the Dresden Files. This is called Full Moon by Jim Butcher. I read this one last year, absolutely loved it. Finally got around to reading the second one. It did not disappoint. I very much enjoyed it. If you are interested in getting more acquainted with the fantasy genre, I highly recommend Jim Butcher's work, specifically The Dresden Files, only because he does not waste any time on world building. He cuts straight to the chase. You get action right away. He doesn't waste a whole lot of time on helping you understand the magic system, which I understand if that's more so your preference. This may not be exactly the right type of series for you, only because he's more concentrated on the actual storyline, which is really fun. It's really fast. It's only, let's see, 342 pages. You'll breeze through it. It's a very quick read. This is actually a little bit older. I realized recently that this came out, this one specifically was published in 2001. So a little bit older, but there are 17 or 18 of these novels. I can't remember how many, but this is only the second one. I loved how it turned out. This one would be great for you to read during October, specifically around Halloween, and I'll tell you why in a moment, but please be advised that this video contains major spoilers. I want to provide you with the full summary of Full Moon, so if you want just more of a brief synopsis of this story, you can find that in one of my other videos. This video is going to be specific for those of you that are looking for exactly everything that happened in the book. I'll do the best I can. I can't give you everything that happened. This book is so jam-packed with action that I can do the best I can to do it justice, but there's just no way I'll be able to fit everything into a 15 or 20 minute video. But this book would be perfect for Halloween because it actually centers around werewolves. So if you haven't guessed, this series is a fantasy series. It's very well done, very fast paced, characters are memorable, quirky, fun to read about. I really enjoyed this series. The opening scene is actually Harry at the diner with a young woman, and I, what is her name? Ah, Kim Delaney. So Kim Delaney is somewhat of an apprentice of Harry's. He's teaching her the world of magic and how she can best further herself as a wizard. And she's asking some very interesting questions about how to contain kind of evil spirits, demons, things of that nature. And Harry's a little caught off guard by it. He doesn't feel comfortable answering these questions for Kim. And so he's very vague and he feels that it's his obligation to not disclose things that could potentially harm her or other people. So as he mulls it over in his brain, he thinks that it's best that he just deny her the information which he later on comes to regret, unfortunately, but she's asking very specific questions about containing evil spirits, evil beings, etc. And so he actually doesn't tell her much. What happens is Harry is the only operating wizard in the Chicago area. Business is bad as it usually is. We saw this issue in the last book. He's actually having so many problems that he can't even afford to pay for dinner that he's having with Kim. And it's okay though. It was part of the agreement that if he were to help her out, she would cover the bill for their dinner. <laughs> but he actually didn't really help her out, but she paid for dinner anyways. It's okay. Harry catches a break finally. His long-term friend and I guess business partner, her name is Murphy. She's in special investigation. She will contract him out to help her with specific investigations that have to do with the paranormal, anything spiritual wise that regular human authorities have a difficult time comprehending. So she calls in Harry, luckily because he is desperate to make some cash and asks him for help on a string of murders that are happening around the full moon, which not all of them are. Some, are, some of them are occurring just before or just after, but it is oddly coincidental and she realizes that she needs Harry's help. So she calls him in, they start doing their investigation. When he stumbles across the first body, he is just disgusted. This body is tattered. Obvious clues point to the fact that this may be a werewolf that they are dealing with. They're seeing these huge paw prints in 
the dust on the concrete floor of the space where this body was found. Harry has to do some research. He goes back home to where he starts asking questions of Bob, who if you don't know who Bob is, you will enjoy him as a character. He is a skull <laughs> that sits in Harry's lab on the basement of his living quarters. And I guess Bob is like an ancient spirit. He knows a lot. He's incredibly wise and Harry will use him for information specifically with a lot of potions. Bob will help him with the ingredients and what he needs to do to achieve certain potions as a reward or I guess in payment. Harry will allow him to go out on the town and allow him some freedom. We don't know a whole lot about Bob and his origins, but it's okay. I don't. Th I think the purpose is more so of him being a very intellectual being who's had a lot of experiences, who helps progress Harry with the potions. So. Bob helps him with a couple of brews. He answers questions regarding werewolves. Now, we have a couple different types of werewolves. We have our one werewolf, which is more so of a curse. So the person that they end up finding out who they think is committing these murders, his name is McFinn. He is actually a cursed being. We don't know who put, put this curse on him, but he's carried it for a long time. The good news, well, the previously good news was that he knew how to contain it for a really long time. He has these magical barriers that he has instilled in his house, but unfortunately they were tampered with, which is how he ends up getting loose. So that's kind of our normal werewolf, somebody who's cursed by somebody. But then we also have what's called the Hexen Wolf, which is kind of a man-made wolf. It's some dark magic that they're dabbling in. They use these pelts that they put around their waists and it allows them the ability to transform into a werewolf. However, the downside of that is while they have this incredible power, they are consumed with bloodlust. They just want to murder anything and everything in their way. They lose all control. They lose their hum humanity. So the power definitely comes with a price. So we have those two werewolves that we're consistently dealing with throughout this book. Harry knows that something is wrong. They obviously know that McFinn is the more likely candidate for the one who is conducting the killings, but it doesn't make sense because killings are happening outside of the full moon. So Harry has to do his investigation. He ends up finding himself at this warehouse where he encounters this werewolf type being. Her name is Tara West. They end up becoming allies throughout the book. Throughout the entire story, Harry isn't sure whether or not he can trust her. He kind of goes back and forth. I've always kind of trusted her. It comes out later that Tara is not of this world. She is from the never, never, meaning some different type of entity. So she's not a werewolf. She's not a hexen wolf. She's not human. She's something else entirely. And we don't exactly know what that is, but she's incredibly powerful. She is an incredible asset. She really helps Harry along with the investigation and everything that he's dealing with in this book. I mentioned it before in my other video, but we just love Harry. He is a very human character because he makes mistakes. He's not perfect. He fails a heck of a lot before he succeeds, which I think that's really important because it makes him very believable as a character. Harry is courageous. He is intelligent, but that doesn't mean he lacks that fight or flight response. Sometimes he feels inclined to just run away and deal with it at a different time. Sometimes that's even the smarter option where he wants to go back and prepare and try to attack this situation at a different time. But he does the right thing in the end, even though the right thing doesn't always come naturally to him. He does have this internal battle with himself thinking, well, maybe I'll just deal with it another day, which again, a very human response. So him and Tara continue to try to help McFinn, which by the way, McFinn is engaged to Tara West. Tara West is trying to help her fiance because he is trying so hard to get a handle on this curse, which is why he has those precautions in place with the magic system, the containment circle that he has, but somebody along the way disrupts that. They meant to free him and unleash his curse. So he is no longer constrained. He is going on killing sprees. It's a little bit wild. They try to get Harry to help contain him again. 
Of course, everything goes wrong, and I'm so sorry. There's no way I would be able to capture everything that happens, but Harry does try to help him so much. There is a point in time where Murphy is mad at Harry, as per usual, because Harry keeps screwing up with Murphy. I'm kind of wondering if there is a slow burn romance starting. I don't know. I actually kind of wondered that in book one. Harry is currently seeing somebody named Susan, who is a news reporter, though I really don't know how serious they are. She is there, but they're not really committed to one another, but they also kind of make sense and they're kind of a cute couple. But there is this crazy spark of energy between Murphy and Harry. She is always mad at him and that's okay. He really does do the best to protect her, but it backfires on him a lot. But they end up working together pretty closely for a lot of the book. When he goes into this warehouse, he realizes that Tara West is leading this group of wolves, which he doesn't understand right away, but she's kind of mentoring them. She kind of refers to them as her pups, her trainees. She's kind of teaching them the ways. And so he encounters that. And at the time, he doesn't really realize what her purpose is, if she's good or evil, but it's a very brief encounter. Murphy actually intervenes and she comes in there and she's again mad at Harry. She attempts to arrest him and she actually does. She puts him in handcuffs. Again, if you haven't read book one, this is kind of a theme for Harry, which is quite hysterical. But she cuffs him, puts him in the back of the car. Tara West is actually the one that helps him out, frees him. Although when he is trying to flee, Harry gets shot in the shoulder, which is super unfortunate because that happens pretty early on in the book and it plagues him the entire rest of the story. As you can imagine, he is in pain. He is bloody, beaten, bruised. It just gets worse for Harry. So you will feel bad for him in this book, but he does a great job. He really does the best that he can under the circumstances. So Harry realizes that he needs to sneak his way into the holding cell at the police station because guess what? Murphy arrested McFinn, which he is the actual werewolf, incredibly dangerous. Harry is concerned for Murphy's safety, so he uses one of his potions to disguise himself. It more so puts a veil over his person, and those that look at him just kind of disregard him. They don't think anything of it. He pretends to be a cleaning guy, a janitor, somebody insignificant who just happens to be in the building. So he gets buzzed into all the appropriate places. Unfortunately, Harry is too late. The moon comes out. The werewolf is unleashed and just goes on a murdering spree. He kills a lot of the prisoners. He kills a lot of the police officers. And so once again, Harry finds himself in this place where he has failed and he essentially has to start over from square one, but he is again very injured. He never walks away from a fight unscathed, which again is very realistic and I appreciate that even though it makes you feel for our poor Harry here. So the story progresses. Harry is still trying to locate McFinn, help him. He has conversations along the way with Tara West and McFinn, and McFinn overall seems like a good guy. You want to root for him and you want him to get better because he doesn't mean for any of this to happen. Somebody ruined his containment magical circle and now he's going on these killing sprees and he has no way to control it. But previously, he had all of those precautions in place because he didn't want to hurt anybody. So. What's really crazy is that we find out that McFinn, even though, yes, he is the werewolf, yes, he is responsible for some of the killings, the other killings actually come down to some of the FBI agents that are involved in the case, and they are using dark magic to turn themselves into hexen wolves. Do they have good intentions? Yes. Does it go haywire? Absolutely, because they don't realize the darkness that descends upon them when they go into this state of wanting to go on a killing spree, being in this wolfen-like body. So that is kind of the twist towards the end. Harry is constantly battling with them and trying to make it out on top. He has a very difficult time of it. At the very end of the book, there is a huge fight scene where it's Tara West really asking Harry for help and to help her fiance. She understands that it may come down to Harry having to kill McFinn, which she doesn't want, but she is an ancient being though. She's very wise. She knows the sacrifice. She knows what may have to happen, but she's hoping that Harry can help him rather than have to kill him. 
So at the final scene, we have everybody there, of course. Murphy is there, Susan is there, because she actually ended up giving them all a ride to this location where they all met up. But the FBI agents are there, McFinn is there, there's this other character named Johnny Marcone who was also a part of the first book. He's kind of like this crime lord, which don't ask me why. I kind of like the guy. He's a terrible person, but I feel like there are worse characters in here than him, so I don't know. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but anyways, Johnny Marcone is part of it as well. Hopefully it's Marcone and not Marconi. I've been pronouncing it Marcone, but Marcone is actually set up and sabotaged by the FBI. They tell him a completely different story only to frame him in the end and use him as bait for the wolf, for McFinn. And so they actually throw everybody in a pit in the land. Harry is down there, Tara West is down there, Murphy is down there, and they are dangling Marcone from a rope, essentially, to get the wolf to come down and hack everybody away. They want the wolf to do all of the murdering. So Marcone, being not a stupid man, finds a way to help Harry and the rest of them get free. I, I don't really understand what he did, but I think he allowed the rope to go down for them to climb up. So Harry ends up getting free, Tara ends up getting free, Murphy ends up getting free, but they're still battling with this crazy wolf. And so Harry ends up realizing that one of the weaknesses of the cursed wolf is inherited silver. Harry is bruised, battered, beaten. He's not thinking clearly oftentimes because he's been through so much, but at the very end when he thinks all is at a loss, he realizes that he is wearing an amulet from his mother. So it's inherited silver. So he uses this pendant and this pendulum. It's around his neck, so he takes it off and he starts whirling it around his head. He's chanting and it's really cool, actually. I feel like I'm not doing it justice, so maybe just ignore me when I'm talking about this because it's way better to read about it than hear my rendition of it. But he's muttering this curse and he ends up defeating McFinn, but unfortunately he ends up killing him, not being able to save him. But there's a beautiful moment in the end where McFinn, you can tell just based off of the expression that he forgives Harry. He understood it was a necessary act. Could he have saved him? I really don't know, but he did what was necessary. And then Murphy sees that behind Harry, when he's doing this whole spell, one of the FBI agents is behind him getting ready to murder him. She takes him out. So both of them save the day. Both of them end up being back on somewhat friendly terms. Harry goes home to recover. He considers whether or not he wants to call Susan. He waits a couple weeks and then he decides to call her. So I cannot wait to see what happens in book three. I'm very excited. I really do think that there is a budding romance between Harry and Murphy, but I really don't know. I do like Harry and Susan. Something clearly happened in Harry's past to make him a little bit cautious of relationships, but we don't really know the full backstory on that yet. There was also a hint that there is a huge backstory on his parents, who I believe were also wizards, but we don't really know a lot of information there. The reason that came up is Harry ended up summoning a demon. I cannot pronounce his name. It's Charagazonganoff or something like that. You all know how that goes. You just make something up when it's too hard to pronounce. But the demon was teasing him with information and wanted Harry to give up more of his name, which gives them more power over his being just in exchange for information on his parents. So I am sure there is more to come on that in the third book, but I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope I got you interested in this series or at least curious about the journey that our friend Harry Dresden goes on. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing a lot more videos on other books. You can find me on YouTube, Goodreads, Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.